When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kuluyaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. There are really two ways to use a bow, but they won't really emerge until high rank. One is Element Bow, and the other is spamming the Dragon Piercer. Elemental Bow really wants constitution since every bow shot uses stamina. Dragon Piercer spamming wants things like Critical Draw and Focus. Through low rank, you'll be using a mix of both these styles. Bow shots all use stamina, so our main goal through low rank is to focus on stamina management before the more specialized skills become available. The base armor set will have to tide you over to take on Pookie Pookie and Baroth. Baroth's gloves grant Marathon Runner. This is a stamina management skill that bow can use, but it isn't the best option. It will reduce your stamina drain as you charge your bow, and there isn't anything else available right now, so make sure to pick these up. After hunting Juratotus, there's an upgrade you should take. Juratotus's Greaves grant Focus. Focus decreases the amount of time required to charge your bow. Then you'll have to hunt Toby Kadachi. The Kadachi Helm grants Constitution. It will reduce the amount of stamina both your bow shots and dodging will consume. This should be considered a must build for bow, and you want to stack as much Constitution as possible. If you're using the Kadachi Bow, also pick up the Kadachi Coil for the bonus to Thunder Attack. Anjaneth is next. This will be optional depending on your playstyle, but you can pick up a few upgrades. The Anja Chest grants Marathon Runner. This will be a nice pickup if you like to run around charging your bow, but you will get a chest that gives constitution very soon. You can also upgrade your gloves to the Anja Gloves for special ammo boost, which will increase your Dragon Piercer's damage by 10%. This is probably worth taking over Marathon Runner. Once you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have to hunt Palumu, but you should deviate and hunt Zitsiyaku. The Zitsiyaku male grants Constitution. This should be considered a must build. Then hunt Palumu as part of the story. You can switch the Kadachi Helm for Palumu's hat to trade Constitution for Stamina Surge. Both will have similar performance, but the Lumu hat will have superior defenses. Head down to the Rotten Vale, finish off Rataban, then Legiana. Neither of these monsters have much offerings for us. Next is Odegaron, and its set is reasonable. The three-piece set bonus of Punishing Draw can actually be utilized effectively on Bow with the Dragon Piercer style. 
you won't have to sacrifice much to get it either. The best pieces are the Van Braces for Constitution, which should be picked up regardless. Then pick up the Odegaron Coil for Critical Eye, which again should be mandatory for both styles. And finally, the Boots for Quick Sheath. Afterwards, you want to hunt Rathalos and Diablos. Both of these monsters have great upgrades, but you're so close to high rank you may want to skip them as high rank armor is universally better. Of course, this is an idealized armor guide. Rathalos' chest is the most desired for weakness exploit. It does require a plate, but it will be used for a huge chunk of high rank because weakness exploit is that good. You will want to pick up the three-piece Rathalos set bonus of critical element. You'll want to grab the boots and head and tie the rest with Odegaron gear for more critical eye and some constitution. If you prefer the Dragon Piercer style, you'll want to pick up the Diablos Helm for Critical Draw. This has nice synergy with the Odegaron set for Critical Punishing Draw Dragon Piercers. It's a fun playstyle that's easy to use and moderately effective against some monsters, and it can be a good baseline to use if you're struggling. This style only works really well on large monsters, so avoid trying it on things like Puki Puki and Kulu Yaku. But pick up the Rathalos chest for weakness exploit anyways, the Dragon Piercer style doesn't really come into play until much later. Build these sets if you want, but it's time to move on to high rank. High rank finally introduces us to some more options. There are a lot of upgrades available now and you can immediately go and hunt high rank versions of everything in low rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in low rank will work here while providing additional skills and high rank defenses. This guide assumes you have no useful decorations as such the beta gear is simply worse than the alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations consider the beta versions for some pieces otherwise stick with alpha. If you're using the critical element style of bow which is the recommended style for this guide consider getting the elemental damage decoration specific for your bows. Get ice for Legiana's bow, thunder for Toby Kadachi's bow, and fire for the Anjanath bow. These are all consistent and can be bought from the melder. That goes for charms as well and this guide is charmless. Go ahead and pick up whatever charms you see fit like attack or constitution. Constitution is insanely hard to stack high in Monster Hunter World, so the fitness charm which gives constitution is most definitely recommended. Unfortunately, you're going to have to lose all your set bonuses here and kind of start back from square one. The Kulu Headpiece Alpha is usually the go-to, but it's not so black and white here. If you're using the Dragon Piercer style, then Critical Draws plus 30% Affinity from the Diablos Helm will beat out the plus 15% from Weakness Exploit on the Kulu Headpiece Alpha. If you're using the Elemental Bow style, then pick this up, even though you'll lose the three-piece Rathalos bonus. Then you'll want to hunt Toby Kadachi. The Kadachi Helm has two stacks of Constitution, but you'll lose out on Weakness Exploit. It's your call. Two stacks of Constitution may actually be worth losing Weakness Exploit based on your playstyle. Then pick up the Kadachi Greaves Alpha for pretty worthless Thunder Resistance and some very valuable Constitution. There isn't a lot of options for Waste Armor at this point, so pick up the Kadachi Coil if you're using the Kadachi Strike Bow, but you can also stick with a low rank Odegaron Coil. Unfortunately, this is going to have to tide you over to take on the higher tier monsters of high rank. Odegaron's set is a reasonable choice. Punishing Draw now only requires two pieces. There are good pickups for both styles. Pick up the Gloves Alpha for Critical Eye and Constitution. Pick up the Waste Beta for Critical Eye and a Decoration Slot since you won't be using Speed Sharpening at all on a bow. Then you'll want to hunt either Lavia Soth or Black Diablos to pick up the Boots. Lavia Soth has an upgrade to Power Shots, which are the Spread Arrows. Diablos Nero Greaves get a bonus to Normal Shots. In an ideal world, you'll be able to pick up both, and eventually you will through decorations, but you'll have to make a judgement call here. Pick one, and stick with it. The next big set is the Rathalos set. Rathalos has two great set bonuses for bow, which are Critical Element and Ballistics. Ballistics can be a nice pickup, but you give up a lot to get it. You'll be able to stand much closer to monsters before arrows reach their sweet spot. This can be extremely valuable based on your playstyle and some of your other gear choices. The two-piece set bonus is extremely easy to get. Pick up the male beta. The alpha set has fire attack, which is only useful if you're using the Anjanath bow, and the slot is more valuable because you can actually customize any elemental damage you want on it. Then upgrade your headpiece to the Rathalos Helm beta for attack level 2, and unlock critical element. Optionally, you can hunt Azure Rathalos to upgrade further. You can optionally build the Azure Rathalos Helm beta for critical boost. It's your call what you want here, you'll be trading attack level 2 for critical damage boost and a slot. This set will be adequate for everything else in the game, everything after this is just a matter of customization and preference. The Elder Dragon sets are usually safe bets, but won't necessarily be better or worse than this, just different. 
Nergigante's Dragon King Eye Patch has Weakness Exploit 2 and a Tier 3 Decoration slot, making it a good pickup. The rest of the Nergigante set isn't so good. You won't be able to utilize skills like Maximum Might at all on bow. But the Nergigante Coil Alpha or Beta is a great pickup for Elemental Bow. The Kaiser Vambrace's beta give one point of weakness exploit, which when tied with the Rathlos male beta will max it out. If you're using the Dragon Piercer style, the Kaiser male beta is something you should definitely look at picking up as it gives you maxed out special ammo boost on one piece of gear. Basil Juice's Vambrace's beta and Greaves Alpha will give you more critical draw options as well. Your final builds will probably look something like this. Now it's only a matter of getting better decorations and charms. You'll want to get a normal shots or power shots decoration to complement your boot choice. Getting a Fitness Charm to level 3 will also give you minimized stamina drain when combined with Dash Juices, making it a great supplement to the set. 